Okay, now family, we are ready to start this pepper pot soup. We are ready. I hope you're here with me. I am here with you. I hope you're all here. And I hope you're all in on what I'm going to be doing. Now, this is a part of what would make this pepper pot soup authentic. Another part of it is to be doing it either on the coal stove or the wood fire. I'm doing it indoors today. But as I go along, I'll show you the little parts that will, be, will make mine authentic. Mine is not 100% authentic. So I have my color here. We're not going to cut it up. We have it all like this, wash and all like that and strip. Now we would use, this is planting though, but we would use a piece of planting or banana string to tie it back in the days. We want a long piece. So we want to it more than one time. So you would use, you cannot get these in fire, you see? So you would use a piece of kitchen, you know those kitchen, kitchen strings that they use to tie your meat and all of that when you um when you're doing your your gross you know kitchen strings so you'd want to use that but if you suppose you have your banana tree in your yard you go get piece but you need to get piece the part of it that is strong okay so what we would do now all right see my mother do you're going to tie it with the banana string don't worry about it because i know somebody may say miss debbie banana string can't eat you know we can't eat banana string okay and you will see that in a video sometime to come. So we're going to give, you must give it a beautiful tie, a really strong tie that it cannot untie in the pot. Okay? So you're going to tie it, let us tie it properly that when the hard cooking starts, it doesn't untie itself. Now we have got here some boiling water. We have some corn and a little carrot. If you want to put a little piece of pumpkin, you can pumpkin, but not put too much before and you look funny. So you see the orange and the green. What color it give you? I don't know. We're not mixing colors. So don't use, if you're using pumpkin, just a small amount. We're using a little carrot just to give a little, because it is going to be all green. We want a little, you know, and some corn. Water is boiling there. So we are putting in our corn and our carrot. Then make it mash out, you know. We have seven pegs of garlic here smashed and two small pieces of ginger smash this is how we're going to be starting the soup and this bundle of tight color we are going to be putting it into the pot okay it's going to stay there and it's going to cook let's bring our flame down to about a little less a little more than medium okay right on over here we have i said i think i said salted beef but it's corned beef Right in on this in the camera sun, I have scalded it and I have tenderized it according to my good friend Amaru. Amaru, big up yourself, cooks. I has tenderized it just halfway through, not all the way through. And I'm going to be using it in this size. If you notice, it has been cored and all of that. You don't want to put in the meat too small because they will cook and they will all mash right out. If you want that, fine. When you cook them, put them in at this size, they will be cooked but not mashed out. So when you're serving, you can cut to your particular size that you want. So when we have this here, this has been scalded, rinsed. Remember we had it as soap, but I scalded it because it wasn't soaking for like 12 hours or overnight. So we'll be putting all this. This is clean, good water. We're not throwing off this water. This is to give us some flavor from the corned beef. So that is there and it's happening. Okay, right on over here. You know... I have my coconut, I'm going to be blending because I know so I'm ready my grater, but you know I'm just showing you. We're not going grater today, we're going to be using our blender to get our green coconut juice. You know, from your seat, you know the green coconut. Okay? Our cornmeal dumpling dough has been made and it's there and it's been rested. Now, we're going to be working off camera, but let me tell you what I'm going to be doing on the cake. We will be stripping the cake. I'm not removing these parts, is it? We'll be stripping the kale because these are the stalks, the strength, like this. You see, I'm not going to be removing just like these and just you no. I'm going to be using the stalk because it, it has the strength. So I'm going to be breaking them off right about here and I'm going to be using this, pulling off the strips from the stalk. Look at this. You pull it and it come right down. Now, we're going to be stripping them, cutting them, and we want to blend them with a little piece of sweet green bell pepper or sweet pepper don't use too much this is a really strong flavor 
but even though the flavor of the green bell pepper is strong it is a lovely flavor for the pepper pot soup back in the days we did not have this but with my cooking expertise since i've been cooking and doing my thing and i've been exploring when i put a little of this in there it gives a beautiful flavor if you want to try it you can if you don't want to you can leave it out now this is where we are hot and all of that remember if you don't have the plant in a banana string use your kitchen tires or strings or whatever what i want to say to you somebody's gonna type and say miss debbie me can't get the color low not a problem sweetie if you can get colored greens use your colored greens with the cane come and know say some people just cannot get the jamaican color low oh you forgot book flight for come on jamaica for come get color low, for go back a friend for go make color low soup no sir so you can use your colored greens with your kale and you'll get your perfect flavor hello when you do the colored greens and the kale you need to send some for me and you need to put it up on instagram please so this is where we are at in part two we start we're starting off the soup so let me recap we start off the soup right there with the carrot and with corn we're putting let us look at what is happening right on over here okay see it's boiling on the medium so what you want to do you want to pay some attention you know you want to if you want to turn it over you can turn it over because when it gets when it's you see that it's been it's limped you see what i'm saying to you so you want to cook it until it becomes soft you will see as we go along when we remove this bundle of greens from the pot what we are gonna be doing okay so when we return here in part two we're gonna be having all of that and everything and you will see the next move food will be prepped and all of them sit there because you see when we return super got chew eh? okay now family we're on to something right here so look at the pot shoot them up the yard so shoot them up shoot them up you see what happened inside there, so look here we want to take out this bundle of color we don't want it open up you see the thing hole the string hole all right you see where it come down to this is what it comes right down to it's properly cooked all the stalks are soft look at this so we want it now that is out the way we look at it i want to show you something we're having some rain family and it looks like that soup we are cooking at the right time you see it, and i'm not sure you can see it in the spoon but if you look in the pot you'll see it. now what i want to do right here I want to go right now and I'm going to be turning this over into this. So, we're going to put this in my middle so you know, you know, to throw away the water. You know, this is the, this is the flavor that you're going to be getting from the corn meat. Up our flame a bit and the very first thing you're going to be putting in is your dumplings. Whether it be soup dumpling or sexy Ah, what have what have you so we're going to put in the soup dumpling them right here so right now and then when we are through with the soup dumplings we're going to be putting in these we have sweet potato we have maybe think a red cocoa but i don't know if i young it young but we have some cocoa here and it looked well whatever and we have some breadfruit so we also is we're going to be peeling the yam but these yams the pum pum yam we can't peel them and put them down they will oxidize so i'm going to be putting in my pinas my, my soup dumpling and i have here a piece of dough for pinas so i'm going to be putting in all of those now when me appeal my pum pum yam me i will come back on connect with the make see all the pum pum yam steer okay family my all of my dumpling and stuff my meat and all of them something in pum pum yam time watch now pum pum yam right here on youtube i'm gonna peel it right in front down the face so you're going to burst it down in two like this it's a little sticky to peel it's tedious because of the grooves and the ins and the out this is how it looks you see it it dry it is so dry so let me see the easiest part to peel so you got your knife like this and be careful you know be careful if you can't get i don't know if you get these yams up there i'm not sure all you guys red at angela hamilton i don't know if, if you get something then um, they have one that looks almost like this they call it yam peel. so it has a lots and lots of grooves this is how it is but it's nice it's dry so it takes a little time to peel so you see how it's there now sometimes depending on how it is you lose some of it but that's the nature of it but people like it in the soup because it's dry you know ah, I like that. so and i like that 
So it looks like a nightfall down too. So as you go along, you notice it's oxidizing it a turn light, but you don't wash that because you'll be putting it under the running water. And we are gonna wash it. So look here. Let me finish peel off this pump for me and show you how I go deal with it. Eh? I want you to see. I'm going to edit it out. I'm going to jump. Look here. When you reach this part, you cut right here. You cut it like here and you come back here like you're making an intersection to take out this piece of thing. We come like it grow in there. You hear? That is how they are. That's the nature of the yam. You see it's there? So you're going to wash it now under the running water. So that is why you can't peel it and put it down as the other food does. So you have to go wash it now. Wash it real good under the running water to get off most of this. So I'm gonna finish wash it and come back now. Okay, I'll wash and we're gonna be cutting it in like these size pieces. You don't cut them bigger, you see? Because they are very dry, you see? So this is what we got from it. So you put it in. As soon as this hot water catch it now, we come right back yellow. Okay, let's get our hands washed. Please wash your hands when you're finished with it. It has got a, a little slimy thing on there. It scratches some people, not everybody. But I think it scratches me, me not lie. But I'm making sure. I don't remember. Now, at this point, we're going to put in this also thing here. This renowned thing here where everybody knows. Well renowned thing. Put it in from now. You know what? When you're drinking your soup, you have this whole heap of oil. Okay, you see the water catch it and it start to turn back pretty yellow. Yeah, so you put in your thing like that. So you have the salt meat and get the salt flavor. We have all of them something on the food on the medium at this point right now. We're not putting anything else. Anything else now. We're going to be covering on the medium. Giving the food and the meat some time to cook real slow. So look here. This is the end of part two. When you see us in part three, you're going to see the real pepper pot soup we'll have our color look and you'll, I'll show you how I'm going to be doing it along with our kale and we now have no more food to put in. So from there we are putting the color with kale, coconut juice and we are going to be spicing up. See you in part three.